The next concept we want to illustrate is the percentage of completion financial reporting. If I go to general ledger, income statement, standard, and I'll select a date range. So the demo date is predominantly in January. So there's our income statement. With our direct costs, our indirect costs, and then our operating expenses down below. Our balance sheet. Under summary of contracts. Listing our the first page was our is our small job and service projects, total 142, 138. That ties into our total for our small and service jobs. 142, 138. So our completed jobs, our open jobs, the prior year amounts and the amounts applicable to the current year. Under job cost job list, double click on one of the jobs and you get on the bottom left the prior year uncompleted job information that comes off your auditor review or compiled financial statements. There are several ways to modify the profitability or projected profitability on your open jobs. One of them here is to just force your margin. That would be for a small job. Another concept would be if it's time and material you would select this button. So we'll just unselect that for now. And you'll notice that we have our over under billing series with 133, 911, 67, 714. Over utilities, the crew, over under billings. And I have 133, 910 or 11, 67, 714, I'll click post. It'll do my accrual and my reversing entry as of the next day. So now when I refresh my report, my revenue will tie into the one to the cost plus gross profit. So I've got my contract amount, cost to date, estimated cost to complete, total estimated cost, estimated gross profit, percent complete. This format's modifiable. All the crystal reports are, are modifiable. So moving columns around and adding columns is and uh, selecting a different format is not an issue. So now I'll refresh the income statement by hitting the lightning bolt and I get 138, 961. And my cost, 107, 332, ties in here. My cost is going to tie in after I accrue my, over, my wages. All the job cost reports in the system are based on the work date on the time card, which is would be, is the preferred method. Some of the systems we compete against side uh, basically shortcut that and put in, in that they <coughs> use reports that use the check date to tie into the job cost reports. All systems will recruit will post payroll checks as of the payroll check date and then only some systems will actually accrue wages for you. And accruing wages is one crucial component to tying it out perfectly. So you have your jobs, itemized, labor material, sub, equipment, other, and then you have your income statement organized by cost group as well. We have a dynamic number of cost types and then we have a static number of cost groups. Each cost group can have an unlimited number of cost types and those are set up over here under direct cost type list. So now we have our general ledger job cost billing differences and the billings are on the far right. So when we go to accrue wages, we do this through there, post and preview. We'll do the transactions for us and the reversing entry and then we'll pull up the report. Here's our general journal entry that the system did for us to accrue wages and it accrues wages perfectly. Um, for, and allowing for workman's comp, general liability insurance, FICA FIDA SUDA, 401k for any deferred compensation concepts as well as uh, union concepts and any customized payroll adjustments. It also accrues uh, equipment control that's tied in through the labor. The 
Okay, so a couple of concepts relating to closed projects. If I complete the job, here we'll do this golden job, and we'll say it completed on January or July 18th, okay? Our cutoff date is January 31st, so when I refresh the report, what the system does now is it treats the job as completed, subsequently completed, and therefore for the contract amount it uses the total billings in the system, and for the cost to date it uses the total cost in the system. Okay. Now if I reopen the project, it's not going to do that computation. Therefore, it's going to use other information. So subsequently completing the project will change your um, contract amount to what your final build and your total estimated cost to what the final cost is in the system. Another concept is our job status. This job status area is for projecting the profitability of your projects. We have traditional dialogues and then we have our job status grid. So we can customize our .NET grids here and I'll turn off this work in process unit of measure just to clean it up a little bit and illustrate the concept. So here we have our stream of cost codes and we've got we're $31,000 over budget. Okay. Another thing we can do is we, we can set our number of decimal places. Okay, so just to illustrate the concept. So three columns can be modified in this grid. So to complete, we could say $4,000, or we can say total estimated cost is $5,000, or we can say we're 95% complete. Okay, That'll change our total estimated cost. So now we're at 12,000 over budget, 238. If I hit save here, on the summary of contracts, I, there's an option when I run it. I can tell it that I want to pay attention to my job status concepts. So budget method, I'll use job status, click OK. And now I've got a contract where I've got $238,000 in total estimated cost. Two hundred thirty eight four oh nine. Okay, so this contract amount is tying into my schedule of values. So I'll go over there and we'll review that. So So let's say we have a change order that wasn't in there. So now it makes sense. <clears throat> so my over and under billing, and we use, we're using the job status concept to drive the summary contracts. So the project managers would maintain the job status, and we're going to reaccrue our over and under billings. And this time we're going to say, pay attention to the job status reports, calculate it, my underbillings and overbillings, and post it. Refresh my income statement. So 204.226 is my, my revenue, 107.332 is my cost. My over under allocation of indirect costs is reflected at the bottom of my indirect cost section. We have a burden utility grid that allows you to retroactively allocate those indirect costs. So your loaded labor factors, for example, shows up perfectly. We'll cover that with one of our other concepts. If I refresh the balance sheet, it'll reflect the over under billings, the 138, 119 there, the 6658 here, billings in excess. Okay. 